Apotheosis! Absolution! In the final days of August 2018, I got in a car accident that left me shockingly unscathed. The person ran a red and I had a couple of seconds to hit the gas and avoid a hard T-bone. Spun in a clean 180, but I was fine. I had two years of YouTube under my belt, 1500 subscribers, and the last part of my Golden Sun series coming out in a couple of days, which would end up with middling views. I was about to quit for good. There were three weeks of relaxing, video editing, and physiotherapy before I tried something new, only to double my sub count in a couple weeks a new chapter in my life and for the show. I left Golden Sun in the past. If you haven't seen them, they're pretty raw and uncut, really symbolic of the learning process that the early years were. I'm negative, outright cruel to the game, I'd say, but it's because I wanted to share that alternate perspective on the series and wanted to grow. You don't make it far on the site without standing out. To sum up the complaints I made, over two games the characters don't get development, the writing is atrocious, continuity is broadly ignored, the combat is so simple it hurts, the puzzles are reused ad nauseum, the dungeons are mostly repetitive puzzle mazes, the games are largely directionless, and the antagonists aren't. And really, that's just the surface. Golden Sun is well remembered, and often hazily. And the new me, you know, that lovable scamp on his way up, maybe, would probably make a video on the things Golden Sun did right, because it's got charm in buckets. But... For the sake of my fans, I will buy the sacred nectar, the mana which pours from gamer heaven. And for the love woven in those messages from patrons and viewers alike, I shall acquire the ancestral sustenance. And in that holy coupling, I will find the power to regain the man I left behind. Dark Dawn opens with a massive text scroll recapping some of the previous games, while conveniently ignoring all the dangling Lost Age plot threads. Basically, the world is naturally full of alchemy, or magic energy in this case. It was sealed before the events of the first two games, which caused the world to start dying. The characters went through a journey that uncorked the alchemy from a series of lighthouses, and now the heroes are equally blamed and praised because saving the world caused immense geographical upheaval and other alchemical disturbances. Oh, and it's been 30 years. Hopefully the gameplay has matured as well. I'll keep this quick and go story to gameplay to story to gameplay, ETC, let's go. Every Golden Sun opens with a series of extremely questionable events. Here's Isaac and Garrett, they got old, but hey, it's been 30 years, fair enough. We'll be playing as Matthew, Isaac's kid, and followed by Tyrell and Karis, Garrett and Ivan's kids, respectively. So what's the inciting incident? Tyrell wants to play with the magic hang glider, and he's so <laughs> stupid that despite being told he can't control wind magic about 30 times in 30 seconds, and knowing this, being a fire adept, that he hurls himself off the cliff to his death. Well, realistically anyway, because he can barely fly and starts dropping fast. They tell him to land in a nearby forest and they'll come right away. Now Tyrell's life hangs in the balance. So Garrett and Isaac accompany you, but apparently set up a series of obstacles to block your path and test your synergy beforehand. I'm gonna pop a blood vessel. It's shown later that none of this was planned with Tyrell, that the forest suddenly became corrupted and dangerous, and even that random synergy-sucking black holes have been popping up, which can render an adept immobile. The game treats this scenario like Isaac planned it. Am I supposed to be charitable to this? Isaac's plan involved endangering his best friend's son's life, and if it was set up before the Tyrell incident, they should have nixed it and rushed to help him in case he got, you know, knocked out, which he does, and gored by a monster. It's so unfathomably stupid. And don't forget, Golden Sun pads every conversation with so much fluff. Halfway through the tutorial, after a massive text dump, Karis goes, ah, I think we're sufficiently armed with knowledge. If you knew that, writers, then trim the fat. Dark Dawn is a self-aware game, uninterested in being well-written in both text and scenario. Regardless, the kids are tasked with finding a mountain rock feather to fix the magic hang glider. That's the setup. Nothing epic, nothing mystical, just fixing Tyrell's subhuman choices. <laughs> Let's just get on the road. Oh, I suppose not. Maybe you could just cut a few lines, you know, 
It's got a few lines. And just as we're leaving, we get our first Jin, Flint. Just like the original. All right, first overhead complaint, Dark Dawn refuses to be its own thing. It innovates in some very specific places, but with the first Jin having to play as the kids of the original cast, reusing as many characters as possible 30 years later, keeping the same items, weapons, summons, it fails to meaningfully differentiate itself. And it's one of the few things fans were pissed off by. The game is a genuine Golden Sun sequel, right down to artistic and gameplay elements the only real difference is the use of 3D technology over sprites. Debatably kills some of the charm, but whatever. And it still failed to resonate as powerfully as before. For a cult classic, that's a problem. And aside from everything I mention hereafter, I'm gonna chalk it up firstly to being a disgusting fanfiction version of the original universe. Now we just got out of a long-winded and boring tutorial section replete with the classic how to equip items and how to use Jin tutorials, frustratingly unskippable in a game most Golden Sun fans probably want to pick up. So let's really get tutorialized, all right? In the first town, there's a training ground that you're not railroaded to. If you're a Golden Sun vet, you might be thinking, well, I don't care. I want my Jin and party members. Let's get a move on. Later on, you'll hit a brick wall unless you got a license you get from the training grounds. As per the previous video, so much of Golden Sun's content is wrapped up in plot irrelevant detours. I mean, it's over as quick as it can be, but it's also a weird retelling of the previous game's story and functions as a mini Colosso from one. Dark Dawn, definitely its own thing. Later on, the kids watch an old man break all his bones and enter some caves. Oh, is that party members I smell? Oh no. Creighton. Dude hasn't aged a single day and he's over a hundred. Isaac definitely aged into a 30, 40 year old anime character. Exposure to Synergy on the lighthouse in Mount Aleph caused the aging process to slow, it's revealed, but damn, Isaac and Garrett got the <laughs> end of the stick there. So Isaac had Creighton try to meet the party in a cave. Creighton brought his pupils, Mia's kids. Now I know what you're thinking. Wow, that kid looks like the biggest loser I've ever seen. Gimme the girl. Actually, she'll run off screen with peers from the last game, leaving you with Reef. Also, oof, geez, Noel and Piers, yikes my dude, cringe, that's literally a child uh. So the plot actually gets rolling here, and oh, I can feel the Golden Sun writing contaminating my bones. Alex is back with a new pal, the game tries to pretend it's not Alex, we all know, but Creighton has dementia, what's new? So surely the plot will be about thwarting Alex's evil plan now that we know he was infused with unbelievable amounts of power having survived a crumbling, erupting mountain protected by essential God. Their evil plan amounts to forcing the party into a specific region and being left to their own devices. Reef questions their motives, and guys, I gotta tell ya, Golden Sun does this non-answer thing all the time, in every game, and it's so infuriating because the reality is none of the stupid enemy plot needs to happen. They don't need the kids, and if they really do, that's the shakiest prospect imaginable for an evil mastermind, you know? Rely on some kids to somehow do all the vague things you want on their own. No, it's to justify the player going on an adventure while lying to your face. Why are they so quick to treat the player like an idiot? Blados, I am begging you to jump down there and flay those kids alive. My second complaint is simple. Dark Dawn is relentlessly slow and boring. Between the tutorials, recaps, reuse of old game concepts, the extremely uninteresting combat with random enemies, the high encounter rate, the samey synergy, the repetitious puzzles and extremely obnoxious waiting times on using basic synergy, coupled with every puzzle, I swear to god, requiring the maximum number of motions and synergy casts possible, the basic gameplay is unbearable, and the cutscenes last like 4 to 10 minutes a piece either cause Creighton is literally repeating something that was just said or because they had to fill the screen with the reactions of every single party member to every single reveal. I almost fell asleep like five times while playing this dude! Next you're dumped in a zone with a few towns. Naturally you're gonna have to do these in a certain order, but you will not be told what to do. At least it's open, but any real choice is illusory. You'll hit nothing but walls unless you're going in order. The game keeps itself fresh by spinning new lore into the franchise. New ancients called the Gene, Genai, and Exathi, for example. And some of their descendants have magical synergy machines that the party goes about activating, all for the sake of crossing a particularly treacherous mountain range. The section's kind of decent. It's a microcosm of what makes Golden Sun good. Ancient mysteries, sacred relics, a true world fantasy. The region even has a political issue with the expansionist Chinese equivalent trying to subjugate the other territories. It's not bad. Until it takes it to Milan level kitty stuff, you know, LARPing as a Chinese conscript, defeating but not killing important generals. 
I don't know. The real stain here is Alex's plot because Chalice, the third wheel, has this completely awkward scene where she's convinced the local ruler that the party's arrived to solve his problems, namely subjugating one of the other cities. But the party's like, what are you talking about? So he dunks them down a trap door. Chalice, Blados, Alex, you're the worst villains ever. They snark and sneer about how the party's completely in their control, but do nothing to control the party. Alex is on his knees praying the party won't just die in a dungeon. Praying to God they can solve basic puzzles, because otherwise his plan's a bust. Anyway, you grind some levels, find some artifacts, turn on a couple alchemy machines, and pick up a new party member. A lot of MacGuffins, but the weirdest thing is this frozen guy, who is apparently the monk Nyungpa from the first game, who made you do a test to continue your journey even though you were saving the world in quotation marks? It doesn't... <laughs> There's no reason for this. Yeah, tons of clamor for that one-shot NPC, Nyunpa. <laughs> Ivan, Mia, Piers, Felix, Jenna, Sheba, none of them show up. You're gonna give screen time to this? Now, long-time watchers have been waiting because Nyunpa has a gift. What's this? A stone that gives me special powers of the Synergy variety? What some might call a Synergy Rock! But actually, the game only gives you five, seven in total, but two are temporary, so they actually fixed that issue. In the end, we get this beautiful cloud area in the adjoining astrology-themed dungeon. But see, astrology isn't real, because the periodic table is true. So it didn't happen. The next major complaint, Dark Dawn is horrendously directionless. Like the Lost Age before it, the game loads the player up with a motivation, acquire the rock feather, then lets them loose in a world of semi-open zones with hard stops when you don't guess correctly. The feather's over the mountains, but Blade and Chalice are making you do things. There's gems to acquire, masks to thieve, alchemy machines to start, and an avalanche of NPC dialogue before you're halfway there. So much tedium and several additional motivations clog up what should be a pretty standard adventure. And it never really feels like you're doing things. At the very least, the machines tie into the plot, so fair game, maybe. Right, new continent, new characters. Ryoku and Hozan are gonna carry the plot from here in a bit. See, Ryo wants his sister back, and she's captive in the inexplicable Beastman Kingdom. Inexplicable because Golden Sun had one werewolf tribe, and these chumps turned into anthropomorphic animals because of the Golden Sun event 30 years prior, went through slavery, self-liberated, and founded a kingdom. Damn, Wayard, y'all schmovin'! Oh god. Before they swipe the plot, we meet a beast girl named Sveta. The beast people are actually very cool, because they alone can perform the slap synergy, which is used to slap the gigantic clown noses installed on every ancient ancestral statue to activate a turning mechanism in the base. This is the absolute dumbest reason ever made to justify a new party member. Trouble is, she learns you're trying to pluck a mountain rock feather and that particular creature is considered sacred by her people. So she tells you she wants to join you, but only after you finish your quest. Religious conflict between party members is probably the most mature character interaction in any of these games. Clown noses are the counterbalance though. Shame too, it's a huge stretch between getting Amity and the next party member and they could have shorted up. However, she says she'll join you again as long as you get the band in in her capital city to play a certain song. It has to be six specific musicians, all students of masters that must be in the right mindset to play. What? Why? So the map opens up again, leaving you to guess the right path and find Kraden too. Going west will give you pirates. Briggs from the last game is looking for Kraden apparently, and his son, who took over his pirating business. You know, Eolio. Be careful of who you make fun of in preschool. Eolio's been captured by the Beast Kingdom, but we can't get to him, so we go east to the trees, to Bilibin and Kalima, straight out of the first game. Then you meet the village elder who says you look like the warriors of Vale, so you should help them. I will peel my Whoa! skin off if it means having an original adventure. So okay, this one's pretty good. The townspeople are having bad dreams, so she puts you to sleep near the dream tree so you can stop the nightmares. Then you go down a dream portal and into a beautiful dungeon and beat up a lizard. This might be the least sensical diversion of all. So you go to see the talking trees, my skin is dangerously close to being peeled, and they tell you there's a secret entrance into the beast castle, that the mountain rock can only be awoken with the slap synergy, and there's a glove for that. So Sveta just doesn't matter now, and that Amity is Alex's kid. Is that why this character does nothing for the rest of the game? Nah, I'm kidding. That's that's just tradition. As for Chinese chums, they eavesdropped on your tree talk and join you, also wanting to infiltrate the beast castle and give you the slap gloves, given to them by Sveta so you can deal with the mountain rock. I'm so tired.
She couldn't have just joined you. It had to take the one intelligent cultural world building moment and poison it like everything these games touch. Ryoku and Hozan exist to lubricate the plot for all kinds of reasons. They're not interesting, they don't matter, they're part of this obscene and unnecessary Rube Goldberg machine whereby Ryoku is forced to activate an alchemy machine later on because Alex is puppeteering the dude's sister in front of him. They couldn't just have had the party plus Sveta deal with the rock and get tricked into activating the machine just like the others. It feels so much like the author wrote himself into a series of holes and created external problem solving instead of reworking the thing to make it tight, concise, clean. Deus Ex Machina's, I could do a whole video on this segment. Oh, and you're not getting a rock feather to use the hang glider. That doesn't exist now. Instead, you go into the rock's stomach to get magma shards to traverse a dungeon. Whew! Slid that bad boy in, no problem. What a perfectly lubricated story. All this stuff gets me because of my fourth complaint. Golden Sun has so much potential. This series could be staple. When I look at what the games are selling, this incredibly clean art style, marketable elements, easy to understand gameplay with depth, a colorful world, and specific to this installment, unbelievably beautiful set pieces in dungeons and the world at large, and an inability to design a bad character except for Reef. Golden Sun seems made for fame. For the first time, it's pushing its lore and history in interesting ways, tying the lore into the plot, tying the expansion of the Chinese equivalent people as the dominant civilization into the story, and the player gets to witness all kinds of conflict arise between different groups. But the mechanics, the tedium, basically everything other than the conceptual work hold this installment back. Back on track, the party heads to Belinsk, so we commission the Summon Sveta song from Chuck E. Cheese's unused animatronic lineup, and... okay. Okay, the Summon Sveta song actually mesmerizes the entire populace and possesses the musicians. Sure, why not? Inexplicably, Sveta is not mesmerized, seeing as it probably only affects its beastmen. Why am I rationalizing this stuff? Ultimately, we learn that Alex is working with Blados and Chalice at the behest of their clan's High Emperor, who's interested in alchemy. So surely, the High Emperor is the final bo- after a very silly confrontation, Ryoku activates the alchemy dynamo. He's basically at Alex's mercy in this scene, but because the trees warned you not to do this, there's a sense of impending doom, and it kind of works. Alex's plan, though utterly laughable, makes sense here. He's got a hostage. He's trying to activate ancient devices for a distant tyrant. The only reason it fails is that the game never capitalizes on it later. Now the big evil tower rises out of the ground and it casts a magical shadow over the land that summons deadly monsters. We rescue each no, you don't remember, Kraden. You were literally two. Briggs dies, and Sveta's brother, the Beast King, regrets being used by Alex and sacrifices himself to the monsters. In that moment, we get a final decent scene of quiet dread before the game goes back to being itself. And it deserves mention. Golden Sun has the dumbest story imaginable. Never mind everything from the previous games. And that stuff was disgusting if you were willing to actually read it. Dark Dawn is a sad chimera born of the old game's mistakes with all new contrivances. Any time there's a serious question that would undermine the poor foundation, the answer's always, ah oh, jeez, there's no time. It's too complicated. I'm sure you'll find out later. Any time something is said, someone's there to repeat it back, you know, because you're an idiot. Any time there's a conflict or a new plot thread, it's tainted by absurdity, by the looming presence of the deus ex machina, because the writers are genuinely unafraid of the game being incoherent. It's got nothing to say and takes ages to say it. And I'm saving the rest for the end, frankly. Right, so saying farewell to the mainland, we're finally free to explore the world. It's just like you remember it, cut off in certain areas, full of random encounters and flat. I wish they did more with the geography, really. It's so interesting. Now, you're left near the areas you're intended to visit at first, thankfully, because sailing around in this gigantic ocean at the speed of slow just to hit a brick wall on a rifle would be infuriating. They didn't curb the encounter right here, and you never get wings like the Lost Age to fly over encounters and quickly traverse the world. Pure downgrade. Here's a fun game. Go to the Jin walkthrough now and check off how many you missed because you didn't Oh, just off the top of my head, didn't bother with the fish shadow, you know, by talking to the fisherman and finding out he broke his rod, then going to town to the item shop that nobody ever goes to in these games because there's nothing there that Synergy can't fix. You know, bought the stick, delivered it, and got the Jin. Or, you know, say you didn't wander around a specific patch of land long enough to find the one hidden as a random encounter. It's so easy to miss a couple Jin without a walkthrough, and once you're out to sea, they're just gone. 
A lot of the ocean content isn't really worth comment. It's a lot of talking to new and old characters, solving dungeons, and for the most part, it's inoffensive. A lot of the game's dungeons and adjoining dialogue take about 30 to 40 minutes apiece. It's actually chunked really neatly, and if you're just lazily going through it, it's kind of enjoyable. Dark Dawn smartly lets the Eclipse cause problems all over the world, like having the king of Amity's kingdom fall sick, the expansionist Chinese city forced to defend against the monsters, and among all this, somehow, without exposure to the Golden Sun event, Obaba, Iolio's grandma and Briggs' mother, is somehow flesh and not dust. She blacksmiths gear for you, just like the last game, Sunshine. Why? Again, what a totally unwanted character. Yeah, all them <laughs> Obaba stands rise up. Much of the section is roaming and tomb delving to collect the Umber gear and being allowed to rob China blind. You also get the last party member who's stuck in a coma by letting one of your synergy rocks embed itself in her head. I think she's a demon, personally. And she wakes up, has a vision or something, and it's like, okay, I'm coming with you, no life experience, you know, I'm just a shrine maiden, I can wield light swords. At the same time, I'm glad they designed their first, I don't know, unique Earth Adept being a fast caster, but Dark Dawn hasn't changed its combat mechanics. Here's why the party combat and Jin systems suck altogether. The party being eight members was a novelty in the Lost Stage, though unnecessary because the game was fairly easy. Dark Dawn is omega easy except for two boss fights, so having eight party members feels like ticking a box, like it has to get done or it's not Golden Sun. It's just an extra life for every party member. Fair enough, but all they do is cause weird class jank with the Jin system all game. And in the case of a few party members with similar roles, you'll probably be benching a chunk of them and never even want to consider them. But none of the party members are unique, not truly. At the beginning, it's fine. Matthew's an all-rounder hero. Tyrell is slow, but hits fairly hard. Karis can heal or damage with AoE spells, and Reef can damage or single-target heal. They're all technically fulfilling hybrid roles. There is no true tank or proper AI manipulation. Every character can deal AoE damage that doesn't scale well, including the guys who get heavy armor and stronger basic attacks. It doesn't feel thought out in any capacity, and it's almost universal except for Sveta. Thankfully, she's got an interesting transformation mechanic that turns her into a super-powered damage dealer, but she's the most unique character on offer. None of them truly fulfill a niche. You'd almost never switch to one of the extra party members to do something because I think the only utility you really need is healing and revival. Which again, game's easy, your cleric shouldn't drop. And you can strategize your Jin such that every character can heal and multiple characters can revive. It's always, damn, Golden Sun has depth. But what the oh. f*** are you talking about? If this is depth, I weep for your JRPG collection. A note on weapons, they're the same as before, having a chance to critical hit and a chance to proc a special animated ability. But this time, weapons get multiple different abilities and it seems like crit chance has skyrocketed. It's rare that every character attacks and nobody gets a crit or an ability proc. It makes the game flashy, but nothing special is really happening. I just don't understand the change. Feels like an admission of, yeah, Golden Sun's more about cool stuff than strategy. Here's a water dragon. Now, a lot of people took issue with my complaint from the first video years ago that it was best to stick the corresponding Jin on your characters and just play the game. Don't mix, you know? I said that because the rules the game prescribes your characters are fine. You still have revival and mass healing, buffs, you don't have to think, and the game is easy. That said, you can totally maximize your damage potential. Really tweak your party how you like with the Jin and class system, because the Olio might hit hard, but he'd hit even harder with the samurai class. I'm just saying, if you're min-maxing your Golden Sun party, Party, you know, you're a bit of a Melvin, no shame. And the real strategic answers to most battles are abusing elemental weaknesses and stats. Speaking of stats, they're mostly tied to Jin. Part of why I hate the system so much is that you've got Jin to use and abuse as extra combat options, mass speed ups, stat boosts, stuns, guards, attacks. They take away the importance of appropriate team building. But if you didn't collect them all and they're permanently missable, you're left with gimp stat characters. That and using Jin sets them to be summoned in battle, right? Mass of AoE attacks that devastate enemies, but setting Jin lowers your stats, and if you ever lose a character in this game, it's almost always because you lost 50% of your HP or whatever, because a couple of your Jin were set or drained. Basically, the game's saying, set them all in summon rush, put the boss at critical HP and hope you don't die at low stats, or 
don't really engage with it. I used to build up Jin slowly and release them, but then it feels like you're not engaging with the Synergy system. I just feel like it needs a total overhaul, a way to integrate Synergy and Jin together, so it's not two damage and utility systems you have to pick between. Every character is an adept, it's their defining trait, and between Jin and Strong Weapon Unleashes, you might end up never touching one or more of the damage routes. Am I crazy? Like, isn't this totally unfocused? Not every fight is building up for huge summon payoff, right? Not every fight is using well-placed synergy, and it's really only bosses that even require Jin. Every other battle is a mindless attack or AoE fest. The bosses don't even have mechanics for the most part, you just have to accept it. It's not striving for glory, it's just a pile of systems that don't really step on each other's toes too much, so I guess they're okay. On the Great Wall of China, we insert three primary color orbs to open a gate, because using magic to slip around via ice bridge or climbable vines is so stupid. I'll hand it to Dark Dawn, we might have lost the interesting lighthouses of yore, but they never stop coming up with fantastical and interesting locations, new ways to do the same things a hundred more times. It really is a gift. The final scene takes place at Apollo Sanctum, where we'll be activating the Apollo lens and need Sveta, clad in Umber gear, to ferry us around for fear of light-based vaporization. Now the story kind of falls out of the writer's notebook here, so Alex, who totally isn't Alex, guys, what are you even talking about, you dumb arrives with his stooges, but they immediately have a falling out, no different than the first game. Alex has outlived his usefulness, he's not really in league with the Emperor after all, or maybe it's Blados and Chalice. Who really knows when you write as vaguely as possible? So they go have an anime battle off screen while we start up the machine, but uh-oh, it's a werewolf. It's obviously Sveta's brother. Maybe you're confused and you didn't play the game, but it pops this werewolf in your face, Sveta says it makes her want to cry, the thing chills out around her, it's Sveta's brother. Who could it be? What is the mystery? It's Sveta's brother! Oh? Alex lost? What? Blados and Chalice, apparently stronger than the most powerful man in the world, decide to finish us up. Oh. Now the following fight is the only fight you need to prepare for. The game even gives you a, well gee, are you sure you want to fight that thing three feet away? Make sure you're healed and all your synergy's full. Also, Alex didn't die, maybe, or something? Did he seriously just leave? Alex, you suck. So bad. Major antagonist, everybody. Son of a- It's actually not a strategically hard fight, it just starts regenerating a ton of HP at a certain threshold and can drain your Jin, lowering your stats. Summon rush it, be over level, just output more damage. I will give them credit, the major complaint I had regarding boss fights was always having the alternating Jin damage reduction strategy, but it doesn't work here unless your big damage dealer outputs insane numbers. So honestly, good work. This doesn't suck. And it just goes on. Endless talking with people we barely know, no character with a personal quest except Sveta, no character has a meaningful arc except Sveta, climbing the ladder again, and again, and again, just so Volacek can sacrifice himself and save the world, wasn't even one of us. The final scene drags so hard, sends you all the way back home and just... A cliffhanger, that stupid cliffhanger. They treated this game exactly like the first one, a two-part game, but this time the sequel never made it. Alex, the High Emperor, the Umbra Clan, the other half of the ocean, never to see the light of day, never with a proper conclusion. Maybe just one more rant, for old time's sake. Anyone could talk about the good because it's surface level. Open your eyes and ears and the game's great. I could just leave it at that. But it's crawling in my skull, the potential for quality combat that's never fully realized because the entire system bleeds into itself like a stagnant gray ooze. The characters look good but have no lasting or powerful conflicts, revelations, development. They're vehicles for the plot and conduits for magic, sad shells of unfulfilled possibility, gems of a single facet. It's stuck in another era, unwilling to shed its skin, and drags that baggy drape on the hazy path it barely hobbles over. And worse, worse, none of it matters because the game's in the dirt, never to realize that glimmering potential. It was for kids, dude. It wasn't some masterpiece, just a fun kid's romp. And that gross trick it plays by injecting ethos with piles of western mythological nomenclature, it beat you. You took it more seriously than it warranted. You're the idiot. No! Hey, it's K-Bash. Special thanks goes out to my $4 patrons, whose names are on the screen. The show's on its way somewhere good thanks to the community's generosity. And special thanks goes out to my extra generous patrons who are... 
Arrow. Azero. BZ Soul. Beverage Crisp. Boha. Brandon. Caesar T. Chief. Cody Golden. Corgi the Lad. Couch Moba. Crack Stuntman. CW Glassworks. Kyle Lapreed. Dakota Storm Jones. Damaged YouTube Analytics. David Castillo. Den Het. Don't worry about it. Dylan Coffey. Editorial Entertainment. Exa. Frankenstitch. Harkage. Huey. Jason Lasky. Jaden. J. Deus. John Weber. Joke Frog. Justin Sherry. Kelvin. Craden. Latrix. Laundry Mom. Lego Sid. Lucas Phoenix. Markulies. Marmato. Maximilian Wolfgang Niver. Milky Moo Official. Mr. Dodongo. Miles Burris. Old Burgle. Only LK. Pink Peacock. Quillworth. Reggie Rodriguez. Ricochet Frame. Siren Smells Good. Salty Smasher. Sam Anga. Sekai Noah Warida. Seamus Nerd. Shod. Simp. God! Special Children. Spooky Grimalkin. Sublime Cataclysm. Super Sandwich Guy. Tenken Zephyrborn. TFY Lex. Thrips Heartrop. Travis Edwards. Venom. Viewers Like You. Vic. Walter Taggart. Well, shit. Zachary V. Zanasso. Zane the Impure. Zane the Pure. If you'd like to help support the show and make it even better, check out my Patreon. We've got all kinds of goals and lots of rewards in store. Stay tuned for more. K-Bash out.